The Information Technology Act 2000, also known as ITA 2000, or the IT Act is an act of the Indian Parliament no. 21 of 2000, notified on 17 October 2000. It is the primary law in India dealing with cybercrime and electronic commerce. It is based on the United Nations Model Law on Electronic Commerce 1996 UNCITRAL model recommended by the General Assembly of United Nations by a resolution dated 30 January 1997. <laughs> <laughs> Background The bill was passed in the budget session of 2000 and signed by President K. R. Narayanan on 9 May 2000. The bill was finalized by group of officials headed by then Minister of Information Technology Pramod Mahajan. <laughs> <laughs> Summary The original Act contained 94 sections, divided in 13 chapters and 4 schedules. The laws apply to the whole of India. Persons of other nationalities can also be indicted under the law. If the crime involves a computer or network located in India, the Act provides legal framework for electronic governance by giving recognition to electronic records and digital signatures. The formations of controller of certifying authorities was directed by the Act, to regulate issuing of digital signatures. It also defines cyber crimes and prescribed penalties for them. It also established a cyber appellate tribunal to resolve disputes rising from this new law. The Act also amended various sections of Indian Penal Code, 1860, Indian Evidence Act, 1872, Bankers' Book Evidence Act, 1891, and Reserve Bank of India Act, 1934 to make them compliant with new technologies. <laughs> <laughs> Amendments A major amendment was made in 2008. It introduced the Section 66A which penalized sending of offensive messages. It also introduced the Section 69, which gave authorities the power of interception or monitoring or decryption of any information through any computer resource. It also introduced for child porn, cyber terrorism and voyeurism. It was passed on the 22nd of December 2008 without any debate in Lok Sabha. The next day it was passed by the Rajya Sabha. It was signed into law by President Pratava Patil on the 5th of February 2009. Topic: <laughs> Offences. List of offences and the corresponding penalties. Topic. Notable cases Topic. Section 66 In February 2001, in one of the first cases, the Delhi police arrested two men running a web hosting company. The company had shut down a website over non-payment of dues. The owner of the site had claimed that he had already paid and complained to the police. The Delhi police had charged the men for hacking under Section 66 of the IT Act and breach of trust under Section 408 of the Indian Penal Code. The two men had to spend six days in Tihar jail waiting for bail. Bhavan Turakia, chief executive officer of Directee.com, a web hosting firm said that this interpretation of the law would be problematic for web hosting companies. In February 2017, M.S. Voucher Gram India Private Limited, owner of Delhi-based e-commerce portal www.gyftr.com made a complaint with House Cast Police Station against some hackers from different cities accusing them for IT Act, theft, cheating, misappropriation, criminal conspiracy, criminal breach of trust, cyber crime of hacking, snooping, tampering with computer source documents and the website and extending the threats of dire consequences 
licenses to employees. As a result, four hackers were arrested by South Delhi police for digital shoplifting. Topic <laughs> Section 66A. In September 2012, a freelance cartoonist Asim Trivedi was arrested under the Section 66A of the IT Act, Section 2 of Prevention of Insults to National Honor Act, 1971 and for sedition under the Section 124 of the Indian Penal Code. His cartoons depicting widespread corruption in India were considered offensive. On 12 April 2012, a chemistry professor from Jadavpur University, Ambakesh Mahapatra, was arrested for sharing a cartoon of West Bengal Chief Minister Mamota Banerjee and then Railway Minister Mukul Roy. The email was sent from the email address of a housing society. Subrata Singupta, the secretary of the housing society, was also arrested. They were charged under Section 66A and B of the IT Act, for defamation under Sections 500, for obscene gesture to a woman under Section 509, and abetting a crime under Section 114 of the Indian Penal Code. On 30 October 2012, a Puducherry businessman Ravi Srinivasan was arrested under Section 66A. He had sent tweet accusing Karti Chidambaram, son of then Finance Minister P. Chidambaram, of corruption. Karti Chidambaram had complained to the police. On 19 November 2012, a 21-year-old girl was arrested from Palga for posting a message on Facebook criticizing the shutdown in Mumbai for the funeral of Bal Thakri. Another 20-year-old girl was arrested for liking the post. They were initially charged under Section 295A of the Indian Penal Code hurting religious sentiments and Section 66A of the IT Act. Later, Section 295A was replaced by Section 505 promoting enmity between classes. A group of Shiv Sena workers vandalized a hospital run by the uncle of one of girls. On 31 January 2013, a local court dropped all charges against the girls. On 18 March 2015, a teenaged boy was arrested from Bareilly, Uttar Pradesh, for making a post on Facebook insulting politician Azam Khan. The post allegedly contained hate speech against a community and was falsely attributed to Azam Khan by the boy. He was charged under Section 66A of the IT Act, and Sections 153A promoting enmity between different religions, 504 intentional insult with intent to provoke breach of peace and 505 public mischief of Indian Penal Code. After the Section 66A was repealed on 24 March, the state government said that they would continue the prosecution under the remaining charges. Topic. Criticisms Topic. Section 66A and restriction of free speech From its establishment as an amendment to the original Act in 2008, Section 66A attracted controversy over its unconstitutional nature. In December 2012, P. Rajiv, a Raja Sabha member from Kerala, tried to pass a resolution seeking to amend the Section 66A. He was supported by D. Bandiapadhyay, Gyan Prakash Palania, Bishwaraj Patil Sedam, Narendra Kumar Kashyap, Rama Chandra Kuncha and Baishnab Charan Parida. P. Rajiv pointed that cartoons and editorials allowed in traditional media, were being censored in the new media. He also said that law was barely debated before being passed in December 2008. Rajiv Chandrasekhar suggested the 66A should only apply to person to person communication, pointing to a similar section under the Indian Post Office Act, 1898. Shantaram Naik opposed any changes, saying that the misuse of law was sufficient to warrant changes. Then Minister for Communications and Information Technology Kapil Sibyl defended the existing law, saying that similar laws existed in US and UK. 
He also said that a similar provision existed under Indian Post Office Act, 1898. However, P. Rajiv said that the UK dealt only with communication from person to person. Topic: <laughs> Petitions challenging constitutionality. In November 2012, IPS officer Amitabh Thakur and his wife, social activist Nutan Thakur, filed a petition in the Lucknow bench of the Allahabad High Court claiming that the Section 66A violated the freedom of speech guaranteed in the Article 19 of the Constitution of India. They said that the section was vague and frequently misused. Also in November 2012, a Delhi based law student, Shriya Singhal, filed a public interest litigation in the Supreme Court of India. She argued that the Section 66A was vaguely phrased, as a result, it violated Article 14, 19, 1 and Article 21 of the Constitution. The pill was accepted on 29 November 2012. A similar petition was also filed by the founder of Mouthshut.com, Faisal Faruqi, and NGO Common Cause represented by Prashant Bhushan. In August 2014, the Supreme Court asked the central government to respond to petitions filed by Mouthshut.com and later petition filed by the Internet and Mobile Association of India which claimed that the IT Act gave the government power to arbitrarily remove user-generated content. Topic. Revocation by the Supreme Court On 24 March 2015, the Supreme Court of India, gave the verdict that Section 66A is unconstitutional in entirety. The court said that Section 66A of IT Act 2000 is "...arbitrarily, excessively and disproportionately invades the right of free speech." provided under Article 19 of the Constitution of India. But the court turned down a plea to strike down Section 69A and 79 of the Act, which deal with the procedure and safeguards for blocking certain websites. <laughs> <laughs> Strict data privacy rules The data privacy rules introduced in the Act in 2011 have been described as too strict by some Indian and U.S. firms. The rules require firms to obtain written permission from customers before collecting and using their personal data. This has affected U.S. firms which outsource to Indian companies. However, some companies have welcomed the strict rules, saying it will remove fears of outsourcing to Indian companies. Topic. Section 69 and mandatory decryption The Section 69 allows intercepting any information and ask for information decryption. To refuse decryption is an offence. The Indian Telegraph Act, 1885 allows the government to tap phones. But, according to a 1996 Supreme Court verdict the government can tap phones only in case of a public emergency but there is no such restriction on section 69 on the 20th of december 2018 the ministry of home affairs cited section 69 in the issue of an order authorizing 10 central agencies to intercept monitor and decrypt any information generated transmitted received or stored in any computer while some claim this to be a violation of the fundamental right to privacy the ministry of home affairs has claimed its validity on the grounds of national security Topic. Future changes On 2 April 2015, the Chief Minister of Maharashtra, Devendra Fadnavis revealed to the State Assembly that a new law was being framed to replace the repealed Section 66A. Fadnavis was replying to a query Shiv Sena leader Neelam Gorhe. Gorhe had said that repeal of the law would encourage online miscreants and asked whether the state government would frame a law to this regard. 
Fadnavis said that the previous law had resulted in no convictions, so the law would be framed such that it would be strong and result in convictions. On 13 April 2015, it announced that the Ministry of Home Affairs would form a committee of officials from the Intelligence Bureau, Central Bureau of Investigation, National Investigation Agency, Delhi Police, and Ministry itself to produce a new legal framework. This step was reportedly taken after complaints from intelligence agencies that, they were no longer able to counter online posts that involved national security matter or incite people to commit an offense, such as online recruitment for ISIS. Former Minister of State with the Ministry of Information Technology, Milan Diora has supported a new, unambiguous section to replace 66A. Topic. See also Chilling effect Mouthshut.com v. Union of India Save your voice